Hey guys, Des Letter Magic here with an early Christmas present for you. Oh yes, it's a video that's been about five or six years in the making. It's a list with full details and explanations on all the ways that MTG Arena cheats you. We're going to start with absolutely proven stuff, uh, then move on to borderline proven stuff, and then kind of theorized stuff. You will not believe, unless you've played Arena before, how long the notes are for this video. But before we jump into it, oh, oh you know what day it is. Black Friday here in America so you can get some crazy deals at the number one greatest sponsor of the channel, Into the AM. You could upgrade your own wardrobe this season. Let's be honest, it probably needs it. You ever see those people walking around on the street and they're, they're like in you know high fashion, but it's super high maintenance. It's like hard to wear. And you know that costs them like $300. Well, 80% uh, off sale right now and you can get an extra 10% off with code DESTHREADS. And yes, the math works out exactly the way you're thinking. They got some new styles, but uh, we'll break into that later in the video. Let's jump into the thing I'm most excited about, telling you how MTG Arena is cheating you. For legal reasons, I have to say that uh, not 100% of this video is certified true, for sure. I kind of already said that, but I have to spell it out. So, first, the shuffler. Let's talk about the shuffler. Let's talk about the research done by Douglas when uh, third-party assistance programs and trackers and that kind of stuff was still allowed in MTG Arena. Somebody named Douglas did a little research on, you know, just... 1 million games of magic, so you know, tiny sample size, and found, I mean, I'm not going to dive way into it, I made a whole video on this, it's 40 minutes long, but uh, the shuffle was off by like 3-6%. to 6 Clumping was the problem. How do you get clumping in a random number generator, you gotta wonder. Um, eventually the theory came out that cards that have already been drawn were accidentally being included as a potential to be drawn from. So if you had 4 in your deck and you drew 1, you still had 4 in your deck. That exactly, precisely explained the mathematical difference. Here's the thing, though. It would appear that they did this on purpose, because once you mulliganed one time, the entire shuffling problem went away. Oh, they must have rewritten the randomization and deck drawing code and then called the function a different way. Like, no, they did it on purpose. Come on. Shortly after this was announced, um, they didn't put anything in the change log. They didn't admit it, but uh, it went away. He tracked another 150,000 games and the entire shuffling error went away. So whether it was on purpose or a coding problem, I don't know. Now the other noteworthy thing with this whole experiment was the fact that it was overrepresented in lands. If you started with not enough lands, you were extremely likely to continue to draw not enough lands. And if you had too many in your opening hand, you would get flooded. Anybody who played Magic back in those days, uh, you know that this was true. You don't need a million tr games worth of numbers to tell you that after a couple hundred games, you could tell the land draws were not the same as paper. And we had idiots calling us shuffle deniers and paranoid delusional whatever, named Jeff Hooglin mostly, but other people too, saying, oh, you're all paranoid, you're just, you want an excuse for losing, huh? I'm so much better than you guys. And then multiple people come out and say, no, it's all true, here's the proof. And then he got real quiet all of a sudden. Which is normally good, but we want to hear your opinion on, on how wrong you were, Jeff. So waiting. So the dude who, who did this actually posted what the code should look like instead of what he thinks they did wrong. Wow, how embarrassing for them. So if you want to look into that whole catastrophe, it's a whole Reddit thread, one of the most famous ones of all time, posted five years ago. Uh, whether it still affects the game now, I don't think so, but I think they have a, a couple more assistance things running in the background, if you know what I mean. We're going to get into those, because some of them are known, and some of them are merely still suspected. So next up, we got a real short one. Um, the stated rare wildcard opening odds are just wrong. They're just simply wrong. They finally admitted that as you fail to open a rare wildcard, uh, the odds get up and up and up, which means that it starts at a lower amount. So if they said 1 in 15 packs have a rare wild card in it, it actually starts at like 20 or 25, and then it increases, 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 and then stays at like 1 in 10 until you hit it. Remember, this is the proven section of the video. One of the devs came out and said, this is how it works. There was a whole diagram, breakdown, the exact numbers, all that. It used to be posted online. So once again, not a conspiracy theory. The devs came out and said it works this way. Speaking of that... Hey, you know you should hand over your hard-earned money to, though? Upgrading your wardrobe. Let's take a look at what I just got in the mail. Let's open some presents. Oh my gosh, I love it. Link in the description, Death Threads, the code to get 10% off also in the description. Check it out. That is where you need to go, Black Friday to Cyber Monday, for these crazy deals. Plus, you'll be supporting the channel. Yeah, I took a look at some of the stuff posted already, and it's not even Black Friday yet. Holy cow, I don't even know how they're making money. Especially since these hold up. I mean, if you turn them inside out when you wash them and don't sleep in them... 
I've had these run 15 washes and they still look brand new and they're bright, they're colorful, and I've gotten more comments in public about how great these look than any other thing I've worn. So hey, why not go shopping while you're hearing about how awful Arena is? So moving back into uh, the way Arena's cheating you out of your money, um, very, very early on, I want to say one to two years after the launch of Arena, they just started threatening um, third-party trackers. They said, you're not going to do this. We're not going to allow it. We'll, we'll find some reason to uh, make you go away. Now, how many of those emails were real? What rumors are the truth? You know, but basically everybody stopped. So Watsy sent out something. So back in the day, there was a public log so that you could send it. And if there was a problem, the devs could fix it. It was just a text file, not encrypted, real simple. So within like a couple of weeks, people wrote uh, programs that would scan through there and collect statistics and that kind of stuff. But then people were finding all kinds of oddities in there. So why did they do it? Were people finding out that like the shuffler was broken or that, well, for one, I mean, I think I mentioned this later in the, the video, but um, I think, and I couldn't find a reference to this, but it's just in my head that I remember this happening. So, you know, not the most reliable source. They were tracking the win-loss ratios of decks. And then they real quick, when people found out, removed it from the log. Rumor is to this day, they're still doing it. Why were they even doing it in the first place? Why is it in their business? Who cares how much a deck wins? Everything's supposed to be just random and magic, uh, standard constructed, will just police itself, right? You don't need to take somebody who's not winning enough and artificially boost it so they feel better, and you don't need to take somebody who's winning too much and artificially cripple their ability to win, right? Isn't that correct, Watsy, or are you doing something in the background? I'm very curious. But hilariously enough, the actual reason that uh, people theorize that they took down all the trackers is because... They were losing active players left and right, and people were doing active player graphs. They're like, look at this thing going down. A couple bad articles came out, trashing them, and they just said, okay, no more trackers. Let's talk about hand smoothing. So that specifically refers to the number of lands in your opening hand, in best of one. In best of three, things tend to kind of even out. In best of one, one bad game ruins you the match. There goes your ranking. So what did they do? What was their solution? Without telling anyone because they know better than you. Until people posted, this has to be how it's working. I am way too consistently drawing this. What is going on? And they finally came out and admitted it. The whole time, people, probably including Jeff Hoogland, but also like him, were like, no, no, you're paranoid. That's not how it works. You just don't know how randomization works. And then once again, the devs came out and said, no, this is how it works. Yeah, we did this. In fact, let me read a statement by Chris Clay. So the goal of the system is to reduce the number of mulligans and, quote, non-games in best of one matches without significantly altering optimal deck construction, which they failed to do, by the way, uh, such that there is no need to maintain a best of one and best of three version of the same deck. Well, you're already not going to sideboard, so he's already way off. Clearly does not know how magic works, but uh, in particular, we want to reduce the number of new-to-magic players that bounce off the game due to frustrating mulligans and mana issues early in their experience, especially those coming in from other games where there's no variance in the mana system. You're worried about new people rage quitting the game, and you extended standard to three years and let people still play abusive control and attrition decks at Tier 1. Hmm... In unrelated news, people are quitting Arena in huge numbers. Watsy is still in the dark as to why. But let's read exactly how this system works by paranoid delusional conspiracy theorist Ryan Spain, Arena's former senior designer, the guy who designed and implemented this system. The system draws an opening hand from each of two separately randomized copies of the decks and leaning towards giving the player the hand with the mix of spells and lands without regard for color closest to the average for that deck. It draws two, then it uh, eliminates the least realistic. Here is the exact table in case you're wondering. I believe that applies to a 21 land deck or 24, one of the two. It's like a, like a standard deck. So, I mean, just look at those numbers. So here's the thing, helping out everybody equally and making sure you don't get a quote non-game is the one in the background babysitting algorithm that I actually don't disagree with. It actually makes sense. I want to lose because my deck lost and my decisions lost, not because I got one land and then drew nothing. And with the shuffler being broken back in the day, if you drew one land, you weren't going to draw anymore. So that chart, by the way, is from Good Grief Gaming, who did a whole breakdown on this. Go check it out if you're interested. So why am I mentioning this in a video about how Arena cheats you? Well, because it's doing a thing in the background that's making it not random, so it is kind of cheating you. I mean, it's at least lying to you. But, unsurprisingly, pro players with absolutely no morals who only care about winning and money and their own status, so in other words, all of them, uh, use something called the 13 Mountain Exploit. It's exactly what it sounds like. Run 13 mountains in your deck because you're running a blitz deck that only needs to get to two, and you will draw one land way more often than you'll draw zero. Like, immensely more often. It's virtually guaranteed. 
So it was a win on turn four slash five deck, which back in the day was way too fast and competitive. Now, if you don't win on turn three, why are you even playing arena? And uh, yeah, ruined an entire tournament. People threw a fit and they did precisely nothing to fix it. It's actually still a problem to this day. I think they just politely asked pros to stop doing it or pros got so much backlash for effectively cheating. I don't know. Maybe they silently put a floor on it where, where this effect stops at like 17 land density or something. I don't know. Just think about this and everything I say in this video before you hand over money to enter a digital tournament on Arena. So let's talk about the gem exploit. I made a whole video on this, so you know, just gonna reference it, but um, somebody gave themselves like a million gems. Not by hacking a database, not by some credit card fraud or something. Nope, they did it because the uh, purchase system took the client's word for it. Let me tell you about competitive ranked games that you throw money into. The entire game that is running locally should be a bunch of graphics, sounds, and, and, and animations, and that just function as like a monitor, okay? It doesn't think, it just shows what the server tells it to. All the calculations, all the die rolls, all the randomization, all the purchase calculations, everything should be on the server. You don't trust anything coming out of the client. It is basically read-only one direction to the extent that it, it can be. You still have to click and tell it I'm tapping this for mana, for example, but um, everything else to the highest extent you can get needs to be zero trust on the server side. And that goes triple when it comes to the financial gem purchase system. So naturally, what did they do? Local math. So somebody just modified it to send slightly different code and guess what? The server took it. Oh, $5 for like a million gems? That, that's, yeah, sure. Not, nothing suspicious here. So before he publicly explained how this happened, because he's a responsible security researcher, obviously, most of us are, he told them about it and they actually patched it. So instead of ignoring them, threatening them, or, you know, all this other bad reaction crap you get from, you know, white hat people telling you there's a problem in your code, they're just like, oh, okay, we'll patch it, cool. And I think they, like, gave them, like, a, like a something, I don't know. So at least they handled it well, but my gosh, that is horrible, horrible coding. Speaking of that, I believe he did it by decompiling the code because it's written in Unity and so it doesn't have any like decompiling protections. I forget what you call that, obfuscation or something? There's a term for it. Even the .NET framework crap uses it and that's like building programs with, you know, Legos basically. I have a degree in VB.NET. Anyway, look, I write in the crap in C Sharp, okay? Piss off. At least I'm not a Ruby on Rails developer. But Unity is like making your game on Rails, just saying. So fully decompiled it, and uh, I think somebody else had done that earlier is my suspicion because they somehow found out, or one of the devs uh, just outright said this is what we're using um, for the shuffle thing, and it's known to have enough of a shift that it's not the right way to randomize your shuffling. How do they know? Because people yelled at them for using the same algorithm in Magic the Gathering Online. <laughs> all right, so we're still in the proven section. This is all stuff that was proven, and this was proven by me personally. So they've never admitted it, but it was proven. So I ran the same deck 500 times and tracked my go first rate on a spreadsheet. Standard Constructed League got, I think, roughly a 60-40 split. So I was going first 40% of the time. That is still, if it was 51%, I'd say, yeah, variance. In a sample size of 500 games, if you get a 60-40 split, there is something wrong there. There is a coding problem where they're doing it on purpose. So I ran an even faster deck because I think the speed of the deck, the CMC, you know, like if you were going to say, I'm going to rig who goes first, what would you base it on? And so I came up with a theory based on that and said, let's run the fastest blitz deck I have, you know, darn well, which one I'm talking about. And I went first in 1000 games that I tracked 21% of the time. Then I built five brand new decks that weren't similar to anything else I was running, ran them and went first. 100% of the time, all 15 games. It's either based on the average CMC, the win rate, or the difference between the win rate going first and going second. And in that deck, if I go first, I've already won. And if I go second, I probably already won. So there's no denying it. And people are finally coming around, literally in 2023 on Reddit. It's becoming a thing. They're deleting posts. They're trying to cover for Watsy. They're trying to call people paranoid and gaslight us and all this other crap because they don't want to admit that Arena's trash. People are still saying, hey, out of 16 games, I went first one time. What is going on? And they just deleted the post. Now, that could just happen. That's a very unscientific sample size, but people are saying, yeah, but just tracking in my head. Well, don't track it in your head. Humans have terrible perception. There's all kinds of biases where, like, you mentally weigh going first more than going second, and you're going to notice one more because it's negative, and, you know, you got to do it on, on, like, a real number tracking, and that's what I did, and there you go. Even funnier, a couple months back, they turned it off for a couple weeks. I ran 50 games, I went first 24 times. 
So I jumped on live stream. I'm like, hey, let's just absolutely crush people with my candy gain deck because now I'm allowed to go first an actual fair number of times. I mean, I guess I have a different definition of fair as Watsy does. Fair is in reality, math in the universe, and at parity with uh, paper. But we don't play best of one in paper, which was their excuse for rigging everything in best of one. And sad to report, my short research and evidence have showed that they have turned it back on. At least they're willing to experiment with it, but uh, none of this has ever been admitted by the devs. It's the same thing as the hand smoother. Don't make us say, we did a short study, we did a thing, we tracked it, we we suspect uh, this, that, the other thing. that we, we all think this is going on, and then they finally come out and go, oh yeah, this was going on in the background the whole time. Didn't you know that? Oh, yeah. Most of us don't care that the system exists. We just want to know when something other than exact random chance is happening. Okay, then we can give you feedback of what we think about it and you can do with that what you want, but we want to know that it is going on because there's no point in me building a fast deck if you're just gonna cheat me and not let me go first 50% of the time with it. If you don't like that I'm achieving a 75 to 80% win ratio with that deck, you have something to do about it. It's called the card ban button, which based on the last couple of years, you have clearly lost. You have misplaced that button, build another one. Uh, this next one's really simple. Uh, there was at least two exploits, it'll be th uh, three, and they, they aren't in the game anymore, so I can kind of tell you how they work. One was spamming a certain uh, pet um, animation would crash the other person's computer, you would just win. And then there was another thing where they could prevent you from taking an action by rapidly hovering over the cards, and then the white border thing would like get caught in some kind of subroutine that would eat up all your RAM or something, I don't know. None of those really affected me. I saw people try the color shift thing, and then the hover thing against me, and it didn't work, because I'm running an i7 with 32 gigs of RAM, so, you know, good luck, but you want to disconnect somebody with crap internet on a crap computer because you, you could run a read on a potato. They're already on the edge. Mm, yeah, people are getting free wins doing that. And we caught so many people doing that in the wild. I think it's safe to call it proven at this point. Well, plus, Watsy came out and said, this is a problem anybody caught doing. It has been banned and we patched it. So there, there's also that evidence, you know, if you want to weigh that. The go first system pisses me off more than anything else in the game except for two things you're going to hear about later in this video. So uh, next up, real simple one. They said they absolutely promised that they will give out at least X amount of Mastery Pass experience for free. I believe they said 3,000 or 5,000, I want to say 5,000, and then they proceeded to just not do that. So you're supposed to get at least, I want to say 5,000 XP, various different ways for in, you know, going into free events and all that, and then they didn't do it, then they didn't do it, then they didn't do it for multiple Mastery Passes in a row. I haven't paid attention lately. Uh, people called them out on it. I made a video on it. I don't know. They made a legally binding promise like to their customers saying we are going to do this public statement on their website. And then as far as I know, never took it back. Never said, oh, now we're not doing it. Well, it sounds like a lawsuit to me. Let's talk about the double ELO system as I call it. It's probably not the best term, but I haven't found a better term for it. ELO is like a tournament ranking mathematical, mostly chess thing, I think, originally. I don't know. It's just like your ranking. Like, I'm a 2400 ranked grandmaster. And then that's supposed to, like, track you over multiple things. It's like your, your overall rank in certain competitive leagues. And then you're supposed to get paired up accordingly at tournaments, that kind of stuff. So we'll just call everything ELO. It's your hidden skill level, I guess. So obviously, it, it's your rank within, like, bronze, silver, um, and then on up to mythic. Very public, you can literally just click on profile and see the number. I mean, there it is. it's not like a number like it is in chess, but it's, oh, you're tier two platinum. So in premium and quick draft, they use that ranking. You're, now it's your limited ranking. There are two different rankings, FYI. Constructive versus limited, two different rankings. And they use that number, game one, to match you up. But wait, they also use your win-loss rate in that isolated tournament. So you're running a premium draft and you're already in the gold league. You're going to exclusively go up against gold players or lower players with absolute god tier decks. The baseline is matching you up against people your same skill level. You might say, well, there's nothing wrong with that, except why do they then also care about how well I'm doing? If I'm playing against my peers, shouldn't I just keep playing against my peers? And if I do exceptionally well, cool. Why do I have to play against people with better records and better everything? Like, I'll, I've actually played in silver, had like a crazy deck, went 3-0 with it. My fourth player was ranked diamond. How is that even possible? So my understanding is what they did is they reached out and found somebody who was also 3-0 and paired me up against them. They're just like, whatever, I don't care. So it, it, if you're going to pair me up based on how well I'm doing, then do that. If you're going to pair me up based on my overall long time skill level ranking, then do that. Why are you doing both? And the answer is, if you do the math, I'm not going to explain the math, just take my word for it. It results in the community as a whole winning less gems. The big, big winnings were six and seven wins. That's where you would really get a ton of gems uh, back in the old quick draft system. 
And quite simply, if you pair up two people with five wins against each other, only one of them is winning that giant pile of gems. So it's, it's really simple. It's just I don't think they should do that. If you go to a pre-release, you are starting at zero. You don't have any, you know, skill level ranking. So me going up against a random person at a pre-release is like me boxing a toddler. I have realistically probably played 10,000 matches of Magic, probably way more, and I've been to like 30 pre-releases. So I don't care who you are. I'm probably better than you at, at playing limited and built my deck a little better, and I'm making better decisions, and I studied the cards better. So arguably unfair, but round two, I'm going to go up against somebody who's also 1-0. If I win that one, I'm going to go up against somebody else who is 2-0. Assume there's a sufficient number of people at the event, otherwise they round up, round down, and, you know. You get some bad pairings, but it's only 16 people there, you know, but I've been to 130-person uh, pre-releases. And then to get 5-0, and oh, you better be the best player there. So it's like there, there is no past assistance based on skill. It's just, eh, the first ones are kind of rough, people are going to fall off, and then... You kind of get the 0 and 2 plays 0 and 2, and you get the losers bracket, and they could go 3 and 0. I mean, and then everybody who went 3 and or 3 and 2, pardon me, or better got a small prize. But it does kind of sort itself, but it seems fair. So what do they do? The worst of all worlds in arena. I mean, quite simply, here's the problem. What if I don't play for three months and I reset to bronze? What if I fell from diamond to platinum? And then I'm really, really bad at drafting the new set because I didn't study it at all. And there is your problem. The other problem, obviously, is that nobody knows that this is going on. Unless you've done a ton of drafts, you just don't notice it. And when you do notice it, you're like, wow, I can't believe this was going on this whole time. So uh, I think they need to just stick to one ranking system. But, I mean, spoiler alert for later in the videos, uh, Quick Draft is... There's about eight things going wrong in Quick Draft, so just stay away from it. If you think I'm getting angrier and angrier as the video goes on, then you're very perceptive. If not, you're about to perceive some stuff because we're in the spread cheating section. What's spread cheating? Cheating with a spreadsheet. Thanks for asking. I came up with the term all by myself. Very proud of it. So how are you getting cheated in the quick draft, the premium draft, and pretty much everything else? Well, I said the ELO system. That's just, I think it's a bad structure. Take it or leave it. At, at least they could be transparent with it, and then I could just take it for what it is. And everybody would either play or not play accordingly based on whether or not they like it. That I'm fine with, the transparency I'm not, you know, once again. But there is no excuse for this. This has been known in the system for so long, there is zero excuse that these are still problems. They could, I'll even tell you how to fix these problems. So number one, and I think this is no longer in the game, but they've never publicly said that they removed it. The look ahead cheat. So people could download the, the known set of templates, all used usually third-party trackers, this is a while ago. Where as soon as you open pack one in a quick draft, you already know what the other seven packs contain because it was either like a pre-rigged template because, well, we can't have somebody have a bad draft pool. We got to even it out because people get mad when they lose is my theory on why they did it. Um, I think it was just maybe just lazy coding. That's my other theory. So you were basically drafting from, well, not even a cube. I mean, what would you call that? Rigged packs? There was only like, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 variations of the different like templates you could get. So if you opened this first pack and the rare was this and the uncommons were this, you knew exactly what rare and uncommon were in the other packs. And you were drafting against computers. So you had all the time in the world to say, well, I could try to grab this or black looks pretty hot or, you know, whatever. So is this a theory? Is it just, was it ever proven? People did it live on camera. I could tell you the name of a YouTuber right now that I think still has a video up that Watsi didn't take down, which is kind of funny, uh, of them just doing it. They pulled up the spreadsheet and said, well, according to this, this thing on the internet, um, the next pack is going to contain this. He clicks on the next pack. There it is. You could cheat, but he literally pulled up the spreadsheet. I think he even showed the damn website. I mean, you can manufacture that video. You just do the voiceover after the fact. Just saying. Like, for example, people are like, how do you always open really, really good boxes? Because I open 16 boxes and then upload the two best ones to YouTube. We all do that. Everybody on YouTube does that. I wasn't even trying to hide it. I just assumed everybody knew that. Casino YouTubers do the same thing. If you have a really bad slot run or really bad poker run, guess what? You don't upload the video. The more honest ones admit it. But no, this was real. This is actually real. You can go to the website. You can download it. There was secret, you know, Discord groups and, and Facebook groups and private social media groups, Telegram, everything. Everybody was cheating this way. So I think it got big enough that Watsi patched it. I haven't heard much about this lately. 
But man, was that bad. If you're like, how does every single opponent that I go up against have a god tier perfect deck? How is that possible? It, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Maybe I'm not as good at draft as I think. Or that's what the people online were saying. No, you're just stupid. You're just making excuses. I'm so much better than you. I'm a pro wannabe. Let's just call them the Jeff Hooglins of the world. The, the it's never cheating you deniers who live in their own little fantasy world. Yeah, well, they got a little wake up call when people just started linking to the places where you could just post the spreadsheets and just cheat. So yes, that factually provably happened, but let's look into spread cheating 2.0, aka the new spread cheating. And this is worse than it's ever been. They actually patched it and then they unpatched it. I have a theory about why. Oh, is this the conspiracy theory section of the video there, Des? No, no, I proved this live on uh, live stream multiple times. I didn't link to the website because that's against TOS, but uh, there's multiple groups out there that'll put together the, the spreadsheets. You know what the computer players in a quick draft are always going to pass on. There's cards that they will always pass on. It's not a color thing. It's not whatever. It's just they think it's a bad card. It is a very subpar card for, for draft. But what you do is you look at the always pass, the usually pass, and then the color tendencies, all three of them together on a spreadsheet and go, okay, let me take what's left over that we know the computer's never going to pick. I'm at least going to get one and a half to two shots at that card, which by the way, if you don't understand this, you can send it around the table again and know it's going to come back to you. You can pass on it the first time and take a lesser powerful card and then draft that power card like a removal or something because you know it's coming back around. That is the number one problem. The number two problem is you could just build a standard constructed deck or blood. Well, set constructed, I guess I should say. So you could say, okay, they're always going to pass on this, 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 and this. Okay. Let's build a deck out of those. And the people build this like ridiculous deck where they're running four, five, six copies of a couple cards. And it has this ridiculous backhanded back alley synergy that you would never think to try to draft because it's so obscure. And they end up running a hyper consistent 40 card deck with just like four, 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 four. And then they just smoke you. That is the number one reason that you are losing right now in quick draft, depending upon your ranking. Because people win with this all the time, so you see it way more prevalently, way, 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 way more prevalently in the gold leagues and up. I've been to Diamond twice in Limited, and both times were absolute hell on earth. I went up against people where I'm like, no way in hell did this person draft that naturally. That can't happen. And I'm not talking, I'm 6-0 and and they're 6-0, and we're going for 7. I'm talking round 1, 2, and 3. So yeah, you're getting spread cheated. Now, so we'll just stay away from quick draft. Don't draft against the computers. Oh, wait, before I move on to that, <laughs> spoiler, there's a problem with that too. They said this is a known problem that the, the, the computer drafts too consistently. So they announced publicly on the forum, the devs said, we're adding in personalities to shake it up. We're going to assign each, you know, quote unquote computer player a different personality. They're like, this person always goes control. This person goes conserve. This person is a, a money drafter. This person is uh, going to go aggressive. This person always goes, you know, multi, multicolor. This person's mono. This person always is the first to jump off colors and abandon it when people upstream from them are, are drafting this. So we're going to do that so that it's, it's really chaotic and unpredictable. And it, it fixed the problem. And then I got to uh, Diamond. That was the first time I got to Diamond as well after they fixed it. Just like I suddenly get better at Apex Legends after they announce every time that they ban 600,000 players. Wow, must be a coincidence and I'm just mad because I'm bad, huh? That must be it. I'm just making excuses because I can't aim. That must be it. Direct quote from every angry, dumb 12-year-old idiot on a forum. Well, they get rid of all the aimbotters in one sweep and all of a sudden that whole week I dominate. Huh? It must be a coincidence. It must just be moral support. It's all in my head, yeah. Uh-huh. So then uh, they stopped doing it. And they stopped doing it right around the time where they couldn't find anybody to work for them because, duh, they're Wizards of the Coast. They had job listings after job listing after job listings publicly for programmers, art, everything related to MTG Arena, and the list just kept getting bigger. They were clearly hiring foreign contractors because they had a reset problem where the reset would accidentally happen at India time. So, oops. Yeah, the rollover was like three in the afternoon. I'm like, well, that's midnight India time. You hired lowball contractors because nobody wants to work for you because you don't offer enough and because you have a terrible reputation. I made a whole video on that. By the way, if you're interested in all these videos, hearing the truth and interesting news stories, you're on the right channel. Hit subscribe. Just saying. It kind of goes without saying, but uh, I just realized I was watching a channel for four months and I never subscribed to them because they just kept showing me their videos. Yeah, don't be that person. If you like my content, you know, sub here. Very, very, very few channels are still telling the truth about magic. Just saying. So anyway, fast forward, uh, the company in Canada that made Age of Mythology, so shout out, still play that, actually played that last night. They have got like the longest track record of consistent quality. Watsy signed a deal with them to take over development and updates of Arena from now on. 
but I guarantee they signed a static contract that's not based on hourly rates. So they've been absolutely rushing this stuff out. This is all in my opinion suspected, but I've worked in software development long enough to know that this is almost definitely what's going on. So they said, we'll give you three, four, five million a year. You roll out the new sets, okay, write the check. So they throw in the lowest amount of hours they possibly can, rush everything, junior devs who don't know what they're doing, and then you get trash code like defective stuff not working, that that white you know gnome generator free caster thing that didn't work. That's just like a Monday mistake if you rolled up to Monday drunk and got a fake degree. So in other words, not one. No self-respecting game programmer would have gotten that card wrong. That was just rushing, typo, not testing, Cut the hours, cut the budget, maximize profit, okay? I am outright accusing them of operating that way because that's how they all operate. It just is what it is, in my opinion. So, you know what would take really long is, uh, is for every single set, adding in a draft personality that's compatible with that set. So what are they not doing? That. At all. I can tell you right now, there is no way in hell that there's still draft personalities. All the draft bots operate exactly the same. And if they claim it's still going on, they watered it down to the point where it's not doing its job. It's one of the two. So there you go. So let's move on to the third type of cheating. Now, you might think, I'm safe in, in Premier Draft because that's humans and you only have like 50 seconds to pick the card. So nobody can cheat, right? Are you new here? Did you just not play MTGO? Which, I mean, the answer is probably yes. Let me tell you about a little exploit on MTGO, okay? As they were losing people... People would jump on it really uncommon times because it was still really America heavy. And they would uh, say, let's all draft at three in the morning and we'll all just spam the join draft thing with like a ton of people. And then we'll split up into uh, separate discord calls and we'll say, you two go black, you two go white. Okay. This is what's in the first pack. We're all screen sharing. We're all taking screenshots, whatever. And then you can grab whatever's advantageous to you. So you will end up with a God tier deck and so will all the other people in your little group very artificially inflating. It's roughly mathematically equivalent to adding cards, which is what about one in three people do at sealed tournaments, FYI. Don't go to GPs or Pro Tours. Just don't. The suspected percentage comes from uh, a, a very long time pro. I'm not gonna throw him under the bus, but he's right. It's at least one in three. They're pulling cards out of their pocket, their lap, people have been caught doing it, and they're, they're like, oh, wow, look at these six on color rares. Wow, I must just be lucky for the 10th event in a row. Hmm. Yeah, well, welcome to the digital version of that. So it's simple. You just spam join and then you hit ready if at least like seven or eight of the people out of the eight are your friends with the username and the avatar. So all they need to do on that screen is hide the avatar and hide the username. Because then you could just not hit the ready button and you'll get thrown into a different queue and you wait until all your friends are there at three in the morning in a game that nobody plays anymore. Is it coming together to you yet? And then they'll all play at different times of the day so that they don't play against each other. And they'll go 7-0 every time, make a profit. And that's how people have like 50,000 gems and a ridiculous ranking and just all the stuff they don't deserve because they jumped on and rigged the draft with eight other humans on a, on a little private Discord call. Still going on, unfortunately. And like I said, all they have to do is blind you until you're already in it. You can't quit. If you quit, you forfeit. It's that simple. So don't show the names. Don't show the avatars. Why the hell haven't you implemented this? Why did you think it was a good idea to show people's usernames in the first place? I don't know those people. It could be made up usernames. I don't care. Who are these people? Why do I need to know their stupid names? What benefit was there? Who coded this? Who thought this was a good idea? Oh, this is just such bad design. It's unbelievable. Okay, that's all the stuff that's proven to be going on. Let's move on to the things that are observed, but not technically proven. So most of these really strongly appear to be going on. So, rigged matchmaking. Anybody who played Arena back in the day is like, oh yeah, yeah, that rigged matchmaking. But let's not talk about standard construction. Let's talk about uh, drafting and other limited formats. I was gold ranked and I drafted absolute trash. I was literally running zero rares, but I was running black, white, traditional, you know, just ambush, boost, kill, pin down, get it out of my way and I'm coming through. And then if you do manage to block me, I'm going to boost. If you don't manage to block me, I'm going to boost and kill you. So there is no answer. White, black, absolute power. But zero rares and zero mythics. Uh, smoked them. Seven and one. Did it live on stream. People are like, how is this possible with a mediocre, aggressively just vanilla, you know, win 50% deck? Nobody can explain it. I'm like, I don't know. Bad matchmaking, not enough people playing. I, I don't know. Just a fluke. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I was real proud of it. It was pretty funny. Next draft, seven rares. I think one was a mythic. There was repeats. It, like, imagine entering a draft with like three resplendent angels. It was like that caliber of deck. I was like, this is God tier unbeatable. I went zero and three with it. 
Same ranking, by the way. I might have went from low gold to high gold, obviously, but I went zero and three with the most powerful, like, ultra deck that I have ever drafted in my entire life. Just about punched my fist through my monitor. That's when I knew something was up. So I suspect, since I lost to people just dropping in unbeatable bomb mythics, that the number of rares and mythics in your deck influences the matchmaking, which means that there's three ELO systems. Well, okay, two ELO systems and then a, a cheater system on top of it in case you got a really good uh, you know, setup and a really good deck built, really good pool, however you want to say it. Because they can't let you win too much. Why not? Why, I have a god tier deck. Good for me. Lucky me, I should be able to win with the damn thing. Otherwise, I might get the impression that no matter what I do, it's rigged and I can't win, and I'm going to stop giving you money. No, bad example. I never give them money. I've been playing Arena for free like forever, but um, other people get that idea and just quit. There's like, I could be spending my money on something else. If I'm going to go spend five bucks on a draft, it damn well better not be rigged, and this is clearly rigged. The shuffler's broken, the draft system's broken, everybody's cheating you, and then the matchmaking is broken on top of being set up unfair in the first place. So everything is going against you. And we all know, I mean, this is, uh, I almost put this in the facts section. People get their third color way too often in uh, on turn three, by turn three, with zero fixing in drafts. That would never, never in a million years happen in a paper draft. Never. It is impossible. I would say 90 to 95% of the time when somebody's playing three colors, they have that third color on turn three. That would never happen. You could run 50% lands 20-20. Still wouldn't work. Like I said, no tricolors, no fixing, nothing. They just drop island, mountain, plains. Do the math. Pull up hypergeometric uh, calculator online. Google it. You type in the numbers with 18 lands, which is the highest you'd want to go on that, and tell me that you think you're going to get one-third of one-third of your deck, and then on top of that, the other one-third, and then on top of that, the other one-third, starting with seven, not counting mulligans, and with three pulls. And the answer is no, it's, uh, it's happening an unnatural amount of the time. So I just thought I'd throw that one in there if, if you're looking for like the eighth reason you're getting cheated in drafts. Hyper consistent three color instead of, oh, I spent $5 on this entry and I ran three color because I was forced into it and I lost. Oh, boo-hoo, I'm going to quit the game forever. Let the crybabies leave, okay? You don't need them as customers. This is stupid. Just make everything random. Just make everything at parity with, 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 with paper. We don't need a babysitting system. And if you put one in, once again, you damn well better tell us about it, Watsy. Because we're going to find out eventually. Like, for example, this video right here. You thought people weren't going to notice that they never go first? You thought somebody was going to track it? Multiple people now have copied my video and said, I'm going to track it over 100 games. Look at this, 70% go, go second rate. Wow, that'll happen naturally. They really think they can hide. And the, while they're trying to hide even more, ban third-party assistance trackers, ban stat trackers. What are you going to do to stop me from just doing it by hand on a pencil and paper, let alone Excel? Okay, you can't stop me. You can't stop people from finding out that you're cheating them. Especially after this video gets viral. In fact, everybody watching this posted everywhere. Every social media, every time somebody says something's not rigged, link them this video. And tell them to upgrade the wardrobe at intotheam.com uh, at the same time. Use code DESTREADS for 10% off. I do hate those people, but I will take their money. So the matchmaker seems to care about the number of rares in your deck, among other things. Um, there seems to be a meta, meta, meta matchmaking rigging system. And honestly, people are just re re resorting to say, I think I'm playing against a bot. That's never been proven. But I think I've been playing against a bot once or twice. I'm really, really wondering. That's a little something for the third part of the video. So, uh, the first one I had, besides that, in observations but unproven section. Changing your deck changes your opponent's decks uh, in matchups. Now, the, even Pokemon Go has this. They don't even hide it. If you would absolutely blow out the person, they just silently match you against somebody else. It's, I mean, it, it's probably good, but I want to know what's happening. In any game, nobody on any side of a competitive tournament should want it to be a blowout because that's not fun. So this was far more prevalent of a problem when there was very, very, very low deck diversity in standard. Right now, if you jump into the low leagues, it, there's like 15 competitive decks that are tier one. So, you know, great, but I hate like five of them. So I'm done playing it. That's for damn sure. I'm not going to play against Hadi Jen or Black Attrition or any of that crap. Now, the funny thing is those people tend to level up into the higher leagues, which I just then purposely don't do. And then I get at least some deck variety, but... Back in the day, if your deck absolutely crushed like the top three competitive tier one decks, so you built an anti-deck that would counter just them, but was still you know stable and pretty good in general, they would match you up against some tier point 1.5 deck that people are playing on the fringe like 80% of the time. And then the second you switch decks, now all of a sudden you're only going against mono red. 
If your deck has a really high win rate, but the only thing you lose against is, is a really blitzy fast deck that just runs you over on turn four, then they're going to match you up against that if you're winning too much is what appears to be going on or something similar to that. All we know is the matchmaker is rigged as hell, always has been, but we don't know how. We don't know what the parameter is. Uh, I know that it tracks your win-loss rates because what people will... Okay, let's just throw this out there. Observation number two is that at least back in the day and possibly still now, uh, the win-loss rate of your deck seemed to matter. So if you would just simply hit the clone button and play version two of it. Back in the day, that was good enough to start getting really softball opponents. Really random matchups, and as soon as you hit 80-90% win rate, they, they would start cracking down on you real quick. And then you could just delete the deck, re-import it again, and start over. Then, when they uh, cracked down on that, it would appear in the background, once again, they never admitted this in a patch notes or in a public statement. People would delete their deck, rebuild it one card at a time instead of hitting the clone button or the import button, and change all the lands to a slightly different artwork of land, build the deck with the lands first, and then the, the spells second... And that was good enough to convince the system that it was a new deck and they give you at least three softball opponents in a row. Then during that same time, and multiple pros were outed for doing this, they publicly said on social media, hey, I do this and it works, Watsy should really patch it. I kind of feel bad, but I wanted everybody to know about this, that kind of statement. When I rank up from platinum to diamond, I just throw like 30 matches in a row. So that it looks like my deck just lost 30 times in this league. And because you're already rank four, you can't derank anymore. And it was good enough briefly to just join a game and hit forfeit. So it looks like they, they may have taken countermeasures against that. I wouldn't know. I didn't do this. Um, I did it once live and proved it. I forfeited like 20 in a row. And then my next couple opponents were just, I, I blew them apart. Like it wasn't even a game. It was a massacre. But I was sick of bad matchups. I was sick of red matchups. It was pissing me off. So that works right up until Mythic because Mythic, it'll track it the whole time. You get an actual number. So people are saying, this is how I got to Mythic. Then look at the multiple articles and YouTube videos that break copied each other after the first person did it, where they registered a new account and got to Mythic with, like, a trash tier deck in, like, three days. They used all the paranoid conspiracy, you're all just delusional ways to quote-unquote manipulate, but according to Watsi, no, definitely not manipulate the game, to manipulate the game and get a bunch of free wins. Oh, the other theory is that uh, people newer to the game are allowed to go first more often, by the way, in case you're not familiar. So believe it or not, this is the end of the observation but unproven section. Most of it is proven. Let's get into the conspiracy theories. Some of these I don't even believe, but I, I'm starting to wonder. Somebody came up with an alleged leak, I don't know if I believe it, that um, Arena is programmed to, if you're winning too much or if there's not enough opponents or you're too good against the meta or whatever, which obviously they seem to have taken a lot of uh, countermeasures against already. And uh, have you ever been paired up against somebody with a suspiciously simplistic name, no sleeves, no pet, and uh, they have like a 200 card deck and they seem to always pull exactly what they need to beat your deck specifically? Because that happened to me a couple dozen times. And they play suspiciously, like, at the same speed. They never respond to your emotes. Yeah, those are bots. And that was it. That was, that was, that was the post. And people are like, yeah, that happens to me all the time. And other people are like, that happens to me all the time. No humans are doing that. Uh, number two conspiracy, hand spying. Since the game came out, people have been saying hand spying is a thing. I've had stuff where I said this person would never, under any circumstances, block this creature or not block this creature or run a kill spell on this creature unless they know what's in my hand and then they do it. It makes no logical sense. There's no, well, maybe they thought this. Well, may, maybe that. No, 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 no. They didn't already see the card. I'm running decks that aren't meta. They have no idea how my deck operates. There is zero chance that they knew that that card was in my hand. Like they would swing all out when they know the overflow is two. So I'd go from like 20 to 18 and they swing all out because the one card in my hand is a, a board wipe or they literally have lethal and not swing. And we're talking people like in like mythic and diamond would not swing at me. And the only card in my hand was uh, take everything swinging at me and exile it, you know, settle the wreckage. How do you explain that? That happened live and people like hand spy. I was like, is that still a thing? It, like, has that ever been proven? And then that became a whole thing. We're like, well, no, but yes. But then my friend who's a friend of a whatever and somebody on something proved in the, the code and the, okay, whatever. But uh, very suspicious things have been happening. I think if it was a problem in the early beta, which it appeared to have been, uh, I don't think it's still there anymore. I, I haven't seen any direct, perfect evidence of hand spying. I've seen some suspicious things, but they could be chalked up to just a misplay, a misread. I mean, you know, it's not as obvious and prevalent as it used to be. Here's another one that people have been talking about, uh, just as like, this sounds like something they would do, 
but there's never been any direct evidence. So that's why it's in the conspiracy section. Spend more money, win more games. Just get better, better pools, better pulls, better drafts, better passes from the computers, better matchups, go first more often. Anything that can give you a slight edge that you'd be like, wow, that last buy I did to open more cards to build a better deck really helped me. It must have been the cards. Wrong. And if it comes down to, like, one of the two of these people has to win 7-0 and and, and get a ton of gems, what if we, uh, you know, made one of them draw five lands in a row and made the other guy go first? You know, what, what, if, what if that happened? You know, it's just bad luck. You know, just a random bad game. You know how magic is sometimes. Uh, would you give it to the person who spends more or spends less? Would you be trying to get them to get out their credit card because they don't normally do it? Or would you... Well, you wouldn't want to give more gems to the person who spends money, but also you don't want them quitting the game because they never win because then they don't get value for the money. So it's like there's been different philosophies on this, but just little advantages and disadvantages going against or for you based on how much you spend has been a conspiracy theory since the game came out. Personally, I do lean towards them being true, unfortunately. The one thing that really makes sense is trying to get the uh, free loopers like me who have been just playing the game for free, buying every masterpiece just because we're that good at draft. We can make enough gems to just pay for everything every time and then we get enough packs and enough wild cards built up that we could just totally freeload the game forever. They want us to run out of currency, obviously. But then, you know, to make us do that, they just made historic where you got to burn so many wild cards nobody conceivably has enough to do that no matter what. Except me, probably. I, I have like hundreds. <laughs> I still have the the mythic ones from when they accidentally made a little glitch in the code. Oopsies. The one time I threw money at the game uh, where every pack you opened would have a mythic wild card in it. I'm like, well, I'm either getting a bunch of mythic wild cards or I'm getting a refund. <laughs> threw 30 bucks at the game. I still have those. I tend to build like four decks and just play with them, you know, instead of 10. Because in this deck building game where everything's rigged and, and nobody can compete with tier one anymore because the power level's too high, you really can't afford to play a deck and play casually. Because even if you go to unranked, you're going to go up against people running tier one decks and just practicing. Or people who made it to mythic and don't want to drive down the rank for some reason. Or people who made it to a high ranking and are just hard stuck there and they want to play against easier opponents with a tier one deck. The whole game's fundamentally broken and just designed to piss people off. And then they try to cheat people on top of it. It's it's just sickening. So this last one, I, I'm i still on the fence about whether or not I'm putting this in. This is kind of borderline on what Watsi and YouTube's TOS will allow. But in theory, there's nothing stopping somebody from running an overlay program that intercepts the, the, the full, you know, the video output of, of the game. Using AI, real quick, card identification AI, which there's like 50 different systems out there right now. Just look at it like a buy listing system or eBay. eBay has one too. You can just snap a picture of a card and they're like, oh yeah, that card. It would be even easier on digital because it's 100% consistent. They use like a hex grid array, turn it into like a honeycomb, and then they identify the colors, then do like a match percentage and similarity. And then it, yeah, it, I could write it. I could write it myself and I'm not that good at that kind of stuff. So let's just say you can for sure grab the output because people stream arena. So you can grab the output of the game, the video output. You can analyze it and do pattern recognition. Okay, those two things are a given. What if somebody wrote an overlay program that intercepts all of it and tells you how to make perfect moves? Not in the game, but in a draft. Instead of reading a spreadsheet or whatever, they could just say, this is the perfect card to pick. And it would tell you within seconds. As far as I know, that doesn't exist. But I also spent a grand total of zero seconds researching this because I don't want to know. Now, is this way out? No, nobody's using AI to cheat. At, 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 what are you talking about? Card recognition. Have you ever played online poker? My God, half the pros are cheating this way. If you're playing for money, somebody's cheating you. And if you're not playing for money, somebody's probably still cheating you, okay? They've got a card recognition program that goes, well, that's the Ace of Hearts because the, the Ace of Hearts always looks the same way. There's no alternate variations, showcase frames, and Japanese weeb editions of the card, okay? It's the Ace of Spades. And so the program goes, boop, 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 boop. Oh, that's the cards that are in play. Okay, well, this is the ideal way to play Texas Hold'em. What you want to do is this. What you want to do is bet exactly this much. You want to bet 1.4. You want to bet this. You want to re-raise. The best way to play this is this. And eventually, you're, you're just going to outperform. Same with chess. You can do chess pattern recognitions. Where are the, 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 the different you know pawns and the rooks and all that on the board? Well, they're always the same shape. And the board is always the same shape. So they just run an AI overlay program that just uses AI to view it and says, uh, oh, well, move this here. You'll play perfect card counting and online blackjack they started just shuffling the full shoe every time and if they don't they're either lying or cheating you but honestly i don't touch online casinos you guys know i only cheat at real casinos damn it okay that's a joke i don't actually cheat at casino games i just play them in a way where i always win but it's it's all legal i mean look up ultimate x scavenging hell i got a video on it on my desolator gaming channel that video has a lot of views too oh my god <laughs>
I know people other than me who have made thousands doing it. Anyway, pattern recognition and intercept and ideal play assistance programs are out there. And um, yeah, I've never seen one for magic. I've never heard of one for magic. But in theory, somebody could write one that would say, grab this. This is the most ideal play. This would be the best for your CMC. This is control. You're low on control. It'll just database everything you picked and tell you what the best possible pick is, even against humans. Let alone, you can just look it up yourself. You got five minutes between picks, you know, or whatever, in a, in a quick draft. So just never do quick drafts. I'll tell you right now, stay away from quick draft. That's the most amount of cheating goes on there. So even if you're not in a Discord call with all your buddies at 3 a.m. trying to spam join the server and all jump in at the same time in the same lobby so that you could split the packs evenly and have all god tier, you know, pre-made decks, you could just go up against randos in public. You don't need to have any friends or Discord connections. You could just have a program tell you what to pick. So hopefully that's not a thing. If it is, don't tell me about it. Honestly, I don't even want to know. This is why I just don't really play Arena anymore. They need to clean this crap up, okay? And I said, you just make a code change, fix the shuffler. They already did. Make a code change you, that, well, they, they already did and then reverted, reverted it uh, with the go first system. How do you prevent people from rigging a draft at the same table? Stop showing the usernames. It's really easy stuff. How would you stop a, a perfect pick program from running on top of it? You can't. There is no countermeasure to this. That's why I'm like, should I even mention this? This is just really going to piss people off. But you're already not playing arena, right? I just want to let you know that you're getting cheated in every other game too online. Well, I'm going to go play XL3, Ruined World, or Skyrim, or Cyberpunk, or anything else that doesn't involve humans, because humans are assholes. Whether they're the ones playing the game or making the game, they are rigging it, especially in Arena. It is especially bad. They just need to get rid of all of it. Stop playing babysitter. Stop, stop you know, gaslighting me, making me think I'm better or worse than I am. I'm going to catch on. And if I can't catch on just with my own human perception, I'm going to spreadsheet it. And other people are going to go so hard as they just decompile the whole game and look at what the code does. I mean, th this is... You cannot get away with crap like this in 2023. Now that I made this video, spread it everywhere. The world needs to know. And if at this point, at least for the first one third section of the video, if you start saying, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, this is all paranoid, you're a liar, I'll just delete your comment because you're provably wrong. If you have an opinion about the other rest of the video, go for it. I'd love to hear it. And if there's anything I missed, any other conspiracy theories or proven stuff or stuff that I missed that, that was, you know, exploited or whatever, um... There's a couple I left out because they're just like, it was just like a fun thing where like, you guys saw that video, it got like 200,000 views of mine where we rolled over the, the memory location and then couldn't lose the game. I had like negative 4 billion life and I still was sitting there not losing. He's just ramming like a, like a 10,000 power guy into me every time and I'm just not losing. That was kind of funny. It was a really funny one. Exploit still exists in the game, by the way, but you would never be able to practically pull it off. There's no way. We had to go like 30 turns while taking exact things. So, uh... Like, I don't care about dumb stuff like that because nobody would ever do that. Then again, people were using Scoot Swarm, Scoot Mob, or whatever to just, like, crash people's clients. So, there's a lot of stuff I didn't mention. And, well, they fixed it by limiting you to 250 tokens, which is the most BS fix I've ever seen. Why don't you just fix your damn engine or stop printing cards like that? If something says doubles, just don't print the card. Don't print it in the first place. This isn't even programming. This is Watsy designing crap cards. Oh my gosh, thank God there's so many other games I could play. If you still want to play Magic, I don't know, Tabletop Simulator, they're pretty dope. Um, X-Mage, I've gotten into X-Mage lately, they're still running. Uh, if you want to come draft against me on live stream, go download it. So, uh, uh, look up anything called Forge. MTG Forge is, I think, an open source rules engine. I'm not even sure who made it, I don't know much about it, but uh, now that that's a thing, people have implemented in their games, and now there's, you know, for every X-Mage, there's another one out there. So all you get on those other platforms is 12-year-old spamming racial slurs and um, timing you out so you can't win the game. But uh, who cares? There's no money on the line. I just get up and leave. Oh, you're going to time me out because you don't like that I beat your little tier one deck with my homemade homebrew? Oh, boo-hoo. I'm going to roast you in the chat, upload the footage to YouTube, and then just quit because I don't care what my, what my uh, ranking is or what my win-loss is. So, uh, you know, who really won in the end? A lot better than playing a system that cheats you. So, hey, check out Into the AM. Do some Christmas shopping or get yourself some new threads for the new year. Or you can just show up to Christmas looking extra dank. This has been a mini documentary by Desolator Magic. I'll see you guys next time.